Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Midnight News Broadcasting Live from Algiers. I'm Madam Zian, and here are tonight's headlines. During the 33rd Arab Summit, Algerian President Abdel Majid Tabun affirmed that the Palestinian cause is in dire need of a united and strong Arab nation, while President Abbas called on Arab brothers to reconsider their relations with the Israeli occupation. Next, Israeli occupation commits four massacres in Gaza, killing 39 and injuring 64 in the past 24 hours. Also coming up, Israeli army announces the death of five soldiers in northern Gaza and the injury of seven other soldiers. And we start with the latest. Algerian President Abd al Majid Tabun emphasized that the Palestinian issue is more critical than ever for a unified and strong Arab nation to rally behind. Speaking during the 33rd summit of the Arab League held in the Bahraini capital, Manama, Tabun's remarks delivered by Foreign Minister Ahmad Attaf reiterated. Algeria's steadfast commitment to restoring the central position of the Palestinian cause on the United Nations agenda since, the, since joining the Security Council. Our central cause needs today, more than ever before, a unified and strong Arab nation leading the ranks of its supporters, advocating for its benefit, and being at the forefront of efforts towards the establishment of an independent and sovereign Palestinian state as a just, permanent, and lasting solution to the Arab-Israeli conflict. On this basis, Algeria has faithfully, earnestly, and honestly worked since it joined the Security Council to empower the Palestinian cause to recover its central position as the oldest cause on the agenda of our UN organization, and as the most prominent issue deserving to be the priority of international community and as the most important cause that requires mobilizing and rallying efforts for its victory in a way suitable to its status in the hearts of our peoples and the reality of our nations. President Taboon also emphasized the necessity for the post-war situation in Gaza to be fundamentally different from what preceded it. He called for a concerted effort to bring about a fair, permanent and conclusive resolution to the conflict, urgent pressure on the occupiers to cease Israeli aggression against the territory and halt the forced displacement of Palestinians. <laughs> In Algeria, we firmly believe that the post-war in Gaza should be completely different from what preceded it. The post-war in Gaza requires closing ranks, unifying energies, and mobilizing efforts to establish a solution to the conflict based on fair, permanent, and final principles in line with the established references, standards, and legitimacy recognized by the international community. The post-war in Gaza must inevitably lead to the accomplishment of the Palestinian National Project, represented by the establishment of an independent and sovereign Palestinian state without any restrictions, conditions or obstacles. The Algerian head of state welcomed the growing momentum of official recognition of the state of Palestine and the increase in support for its full membership in the UN. Let's take a listen. <laughs> We warmly welcome the increasing momentum of official recognitions of the state of Palestine and the growing support for its full membership in the United Nations. The historic decision recently adopted by the General Assembly of our UN organization reflects in its content and objectives a historical reality. This is the irrefutable reality which the international community has finally recognized in its entirety. The essence of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict lies in undermining the Palestinian National Project. The resolution of this conflict can only come through the accomplishment of this project and the expedited establishment of the Palestinian state. 
We resonate deeply with the essence of this resolution and once again call on the Security Council to reconsider the issue of the State of Palestine's membership to make up for the opportunities it missed and made the entire international community miss to give justice and rights to the Palestinian people. President Abun stressed that the multiple and complex crises experienced by Arab countries such as Sudan, Libya and Yemen require a prominent Arab role that contributes to erasing or easing conflicts and warding off the threats and dangers of foreign interference. The situation in brotherly Sudan, in brotherly Libya, in brotherly Yemen, and in the rest of the Arab world, deprived of security and stability, and which also need a prominent Arab role that contributes to extinguishing the fuse of conflict among the people of one nation and ward off the threats and dangers that target them as a result of the increasingly expanding serious and fierce foreign interventions. The Algerian president also stressed that the current serious challenges have made the reform of the Arab League an urgent priority to enhance defending common interests and central causes of the Arab world and to restore its position as an influential international actor on the global scene. Let's have a listen. <laughs> The efficiency and effectiveness of joint Arab action in these particular circumstances and the serious challenges that characterize them and which bring it back to the top of their priorities is the issue of reforming the League of Arab States and evaluating its working methods. A reform whose necessity is strengthened, a reform for which demand is increasing, and a reform whose origins have become clear to everyone. Firstly, reform is imperative to make up for the efforts and endeavors we missed in facing the current challenges. Secondly, reform is imperative to unite our ranks and consolidate them more closely in defending our common interests and central causes. Thirdly and finally, reform is imperative to reconsider joint Arab action, restore the health of Arab world and restore its position as an influential international actor in the course of issues on the global scene. For his part, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas called on the uh, as he described the, the Arab brothers and friends to reconsider their relations with the Israeli occupation and condition their continuation with the end of the war against the Palestinian people, their land and their sanctities, as well as returning to the peace process and international legitimacy. In his speech before the 33rd Arab summit held in the Bahraini capital Manama, President Abbas indicated that the Palestinian government did not receive the financial support it expected from international and regional partners, stressing the need to activate the Arab safety network to enhance the safeness of the Palestinian people and enable the government to carry out its duties. Even though this government has been warmly welcomed by the world, no financial aid was provided to it, as we expected. Israel continues to withhold our funds, which really puts us in a very difficult situation. Now to updates on the situation in the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Ministry of Health in Gaza announced that the Israeli occupation committed four massacres against families in the Gaza Strip, killing 39 people and injuring 64. The Ministry of Health revealed in a statement on Thursday that the death toll of the Zionist aggression on the Gaza Strip had risen to 35,272 martyrs since the 7th of last October. The Zionist Occupation Army announced on Thursday the killing of five of its soldiers in northern Gaza. The Zionist Army said in a statement that the incident involved four 
paratroopers and their commander. Hebrew media reports indicated that two tanks fired at the building where the soldiers were located, but the reason for this action has not been yet clarified. The same sources added that seven Sinus soldiers were injured in the same incident. It's also worth noting that earlier the Al Qassam brigades, the military wing of Hamas, announced the killing of 12 Israeli soldiers in a complex operation in the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza. For the fourth day in a row, Zionist occupation forces have bombed Palestinian homes in Jabalia camp, northern Gaza Strip, amidst intensified clashes with resistance forces. The Al Qassam brigades reported killing 12 Zionist soldiers in a combined operation in the camp. Hassan Burkan. These Palestinians are searching through the rubble for victims of the Zionist bombings that targeted a house in Jabalia camp in northern Gaza Strip. In this camp, the occupation army continues its incursion under heavy fire cover provided by warplanes and artillery. They deported us from the north to the Gaza Strip. Here we are thrown on the streets. They destroyed our houses on our heads. They killed four children. They were martyred, among them a doctor and a head of department. My four older children died. They were martyred. Our homes were destroyed. They shook us and they threw us on the streets. Who is looking for us? Which organization? Which area and which government? Let them see that we are thrown on the streets with our children and little ones who don't have milk and want food. Where from? Continuous raids launched by the occupation army on various residential areas in the Jabalia camp and its outskirts, in addition to shelter centers, causing a massive displacement of thousands of Palestinians. Fighting has been on for a week, but we left before. The Jews brought down our houses. It's been four months we are on the streets. We went back to find we don't have houses. We were staying in towns, they came back to us and displaced us. Here, we thank those who welcomed us, but we're under the ruins, as you can see. There is no shelter, no housing, no toilets, no clothes to our children. We left with nothing. Weeks after the occupation announced the completion of its mission in the areas of northern Gaza Strip, the Palestinian resistance has brought the confrontation back to its starting point. They have announced a series of operations targeting occupation forces attempting to penetrate the Jabalia area, an area that witnessed violent confrontations at the beginning of the aggression. Through complex ambushes and direct engagements with soldiers at close range, Palestinian resistance elements have inflicted losses on the occupation army, killing at least 12 soldiers in an operation in the Block 4 area of Jabalia camp. Video clips distributed by military arms of the resistance factions and stories circulated on the streets offer only a glimpse of the harsh realities on the ground. Ismail Hinaya, head of the Hamas Political Bureau, announced that Israeli military actions in Rafah have halted progress in ceasefire and prisoner exchange negotiations. Hinaya stated that Hamas had agreed to a proposal from mediators, but Israel's subsequent aggression and amendments to the proposal have led to a deadlock. He emphasized that despite Hamas's willingness to engage in dialogue, Israel continues its military operations in Gaza, showing disregard for the fate of its prisoners. We recently announced our agreement to the proposal presented to us by brothers in Egypt and Qatar, which was known to the American administration and followed up on. But the occupation responded to this proposal by occupying and controlling the Rafah crossing and actually starting the aggression in the Rafah area and entering the Jabalia camp and the Zaytun neighborhood in Gaza City. And they made amendments to the proposal and put the negotiations at an impasse. South Africa's ambassador to the Netherlands, Vuzi Mutsi Madonsela, asserted that there is a substantial evidence indicating Israel's intention to commit genocide in the Gaza Strip. During a court session discussing additional measures against Israel for alleged genocide, 
Adon Saleh criticized Israel for disregarding the International Court of Justice orders. He affirmed that Israeli society broadly supports these actions, citing the recent aggression in Rafah as a trigger for South Africa's renewed appeal to the ICJ. It is an honor. When we last appeared before this court to hold this genocidal process to preserve Palestine and its people, Instead, Israel's genocide has continued apace and has just reached a new and horrific stage. Israel has sought to hide its crimes through the weaponization of international humanitarian law. It pretends that the civilians it ruthlessly kills through its 2,000-pound bombs, through its targeted airstrikes, through its artificial intelligence systems, through its executions, are human shields. This whitewashing of Israel's genocide misses the key and fundamental element, that of the massive and still mounting evidence of Israel's genocidal intent. In the same context, the South African delegation also confirmed the four accord that the is that Israel, Israel's goal of erasing Gaza from the map is about to be achieved, stressing that the occupation is blatantly violating the measures imposed by the International Court of Justice. Let's take a listen. The key point today is that Israel's declared aim of wiping Gaza from the map is about to be realized. Further, evidence of appalling crimes and atrocities is literally being destroyed and bulldozed, in effect wiping the slate clean for those who've committed these crimes and making a mockery of justice. By these actions, Israel's genocide of Palestinians continues through military attacks and man-made starvation and while mocking this court's provisional measures of protecting the rights of Palestinians under the Genocide Convention. U.S. police forces stormed the campus of the University of California, Irvine, in Los Angeles and arrested a number of student protests demanding an end to the aggression against the Gaza Strip. A spokeswoman for the Irvine Police Department said that security forces rushed to the campus at the request of university officials and arrested a number of pro-Palestinian student protesters, adding that the number of arrested would not be disclosed until the dispersal of the student of the citizens. Watch out over here. On Thursday, Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf held bilateral talks with the Prime Minister of the Lebanese caretaker government, Najib Miqati, on the sidelines of his participation as a representative of President Aboun in the Arab summit in Manama. A statement by the Algerian Foreign Ministry explained that the two parties discussed during their talks many files related to economic cooperation relations between Algeria and Lebanon and ways to strengthen them to broader horizons that respond to the aspirations of the two peoples. Algeria's permanent representative to the United Nations Ambassador Ammar bin Jama reaffirmed Algeria's unwavering support for oppressed peoples, particularly Palestinians and Sahrawis. Speaking at the annual conference of the UN Decolonization Committee in Caracas, bin Jama emphasized that both Palestinians and Sahrawis share a common struggle against colonialism and oppression in their fight for liberation. The ambassador criticized Morocco for its agreement to recognize Moroccan sovereignty over Western Sahara in exchange for normalizing relations with Israel. He labeled this uh, a betrayal of the Palestinian cause, underscoring Algeria's commitment to defending just causes worldwide.
We have already sworn that Algeria will work with determination to fulfill its well-known and recognized role as a spokesman for oppressed peoples and the voiceless. We came here to this international conference on decolonization to demand, once again, the right to self-determination for the people of Western Sahara. Let it also be clear that the Algerian delegation will continue to work tirelessly and relentlessly to defend the rights of the Palestinian people to self-determination. This is Algeria's duty and honor within the framework of the United Nations group. The representative of the Polisario Front at the United Nations and coordinator with MINURSU, Sidi Mohamed Ammar, said that the expansionist policy of the Moroccan occupation threatens peace and security in the region and beyond and impedes the end of colonialism in Western Sahara. The representative of the Polisario Front stressed in a speech to the participants in the regional seminar for the Caribbean stressed that the only option for the Sahrawi issue is to defend the principles of international law. The European Union delegation in partnership with the Algerian Investment Promotion Agency organized a forum on exploring investment opportunities in Algeria. The meeting was an opportunity to renew the desire of Algeria and the EU to enhance their cooperation and raise the volume of European investments in Algeria in light of the improvement in the business and investment climate through the procedures and measures that Algeria has put in place for foreign investors. So these are the three main chapters uh, of our, and, and of course the, the, the first count is there. And on the sidelines of the forum, the Algerian Minister of Industry, Adi Aoun, called on EU countries to increase the volume of their investments in Algeria, especially since they're considered Algeria's first trading partner with a volume exceeding 46 billion euros during the first 11 months of last year. Let's take a listen. In 2023, the volume of trade reached around 46 billion euros, 70% of which are related to the trade sector. But investment in certain fields is still weak, and we saw with the officials of the European Union what are the sectors on which we should emphasize and increase studies so that there will be investments from European countries in the future. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese leader Xi Jinping on Thursday reaffirmed their No Limits partnership that has deepened. The largely symbolic and ceremonial visit stressed partnership between the two countries who both face challenges in their relationship with the US and Europe. Marwa Bilawar. The close alliance between Russia and the superpower China is being closely examined as Russian President Vladimir Putin embarked on a two-day state visit to Beijing, seeking to deepen ties after launching some of Russia's most significant incursions into Ukraine. Amid escalating tensions between Russia, China and the West over the conflict in Ukraine and trade disputes, the presidents of both countries are affirming their mutual dedication to highlighting their strong political and diplomatic ties regarding the Ukrainian situation. Both sides agree that a political solution to the Ukrainian crisis is the right direction to take. China hopes that peace and stability will be quickly restored to the European continent and will continue to play a constructive role in this end. The meeting between the two leaders immediately raised concerns in Washington and Western capitals. Relations between Russia and China are not opportunistic and are not directed against anyone. Our cooperation in international affairs is one of the factors of stability in the international arena. The strengthening alliance between Russia and China amid the conflict has served as a strategic counterweight to Western pressure and has played a crucial role in blustering Russia's economic stability. China and Russia hold similar views on various geopolitical and economic issues, which have halted further economic decline for both nations and resulted in their trade volume exceeding all expectations, alleviating worries about their deepening alliance. And we wrap our edition with some cultural news. The fourth edition of the Imadrasan International Film Festival in the province of Betna, Eastern Algeria, 
concluded on Wednesday night after a busy week of cinematic screenings and training workshops. The jury crowned the Jordanian short film Dinar as the best short film for this edition. And that's a wrap for tonight's edition. Thank you for watching. If you missed any part of our edition, you can check it on our social media platforms. Thank you for now and see you tomorrow.